More than half of humanity lives in towns and cities, and this number is growing all the time. In 2012, one out of every three people living in cities in the developing world lives in a slum. UN Habitat projects that this number will rise to 1.4 billion slum dwellers by 2020, if nothing is done. The drainage is very poor. The roads are really a problem. Then our people, actually the way they, they, they sleep, you find some people five, ten in one room. Apart from dealing with the more obvious disadvantages of life in these informal settlements relating to their health and physical security, these families are unable to make long-term plans for their future. One of the main difficulties is the insecurity of land tenure. People in the squatter settlement, first thing, that they, if you see their houses, it's all temporary because they don't know when will the, the eviction come. In 2008, UN Habitat launched the Participatory Slum Upgrading Program, or PSUP. The program targets to improve the living conditions in towns and cities and positively contribute to Millennium Development Goal 7, Target 7D, to improve the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers by the year 2020. Currently, there are 38 countries among the African, Caribbean and Pacific states participating in the program, which is funded by the European Commission. La croissance démographique des villes a connu ces dernières années une accélération, une augmentation jamais connue par le passé. Pour l'Union européenne, l'engagement de l'ensemble de ses États membres comme de la Commission européenne est très clair. Il s'agit, dans le cas des Millennium Goals, de faire en sorte que au moins 100 millions des personnes qui aujourd'hui connaissent cet habitat précaire puissent connaître un environnement différent dans les années à venir. This participatory approach is really uh, something that is very good because it brings everybody on board, you know, right from the, the grassroots, the intended beneficiaries, then the local people will embrace, you know, uh, the different activities and ensure that they, they are implemented successfully and then also uh, they will ensure that they are maintained and it will become a, something sustainable. The PSUP has adopted a three-phase approach. Phase one, urban profiling. Phase two, action planning and program document formulation. And phase three, project program implementation. Here, on Fiji's largest and most populated island of Viti Levu, this community has just embarked on the profiling phase of the program. Together with um, the director housing, um, land and uh, urban development, we want to be able to hear from you what you think about your community, your issues, and how you think your community should be developed. And in the capital of Ghana, in West Africa, this area of Ashaiman is occupied by informal dwellings. One small section has already been replaced by a new complex which houses 32 families in self-contained apartments. The new owner-occupiers are purchasing the properties through long-term mortgages. The complex also includes 15 commercial units. I have four children and we were, we were living in a single room and sharing the bath and the toilet with each, uh, other people. In this place we have everything inside the room. We have a kitchen, toilet and bath, two bedrooms and a hall. I feel very, very secure here. Still in West Africa, Niger has made significant progress in the PSUP. To date, two slum areas have been involved in urban profiling. Due to poor sanitation, the vulnerable urban populations in these congested neighborhoods face problems of malaria and diarrhea. This has resulted in a high rate of child mortality. 
dans la capitale, si je prends l'exemple de deux bidonvilles, ceux de Sagar et de Gamkale, qui font l'objet d'études au niveau de notre ministère en collaboration avec ONU Habitat, vous avez à peu près 600 habitants par hectare. Et 600 habitants qui vivent sur un hectare sans service de base. Donc vous imaginez un petit peu les problèmes que ça peut causer. The mapping and profiling of these vulnerable communities serves not just as an urban regeneration tool, but also as a measure to prevent and respond to disasters. We want to ensure that we are prepared and we work with communities, vulnerable populations, to be prepared for likelihoods of certain emergencies. So we get a profile, the risk and hazard profile of some of this population. That's another key message. We want to arm communities with the information they need to not settle in certain areas or with the information that is necessary to work with governments to ensure we're preparing communities not to live in an hazard way. The catastrophic earthquake that hit the Caribbean country of Haiti in 2010 led to an emergency intervention by UN Habitat. The rapid response to the earthquake has been more recently succeeded by long-term initiatives. UN Habitat's participatory slum upgrading program is working in Haiti to help address the slum situation. Although it is still early days, a number of reconstruction and upgrading activities have been started under the UN Habitat. These include the construction of a community resource centre, street naming and house numbering, improvement of an access road, and the installation of solar-powered street lights. But despite these positive steps towards reducing the world's informal settlements and setting vulnerable urban communities on the road to development, there have been some challenges. A lot of them are very suspicious of plans, uh, either uh, the thing that the plan, when executed, will deny them of their shelter or it's going to be managed by people other than themselves and they will have to pay very heavily for this new facility. We have had some challenges in one of some of our local councils. You find that the leaders themselves, either because they have not been able to get political mileage out of the proposed interventions, some of them have had a tendency of uh, uh, misguiding the public. UN Habitat, through its participatory slum upgrading program, faces these challenges head on as it makes steady progress towards tackling urban development issues at regional, national and local level. I would like to thank the UN Habitat for giving us the opportunity to carry out that survey and uh, it has uh, helped me to learn new things, especially in approaching these quarter settlements and especially the data we collected, it helped us a lot in determining uh, priority project areas. As these pilot projects begin to roll out, the best examples will be replicated and scaled up to bring rapidly growing cities in African, Caribbean and Pacific countries closer to the ultimate goal of halving the number of slum dwellers by 2020.